So before I start off this episode this week, I just want to thank you, the viewer, for watching these videos. I hit a milestone of a thousand subscribers this week, which in and of itself, the number doesn't really mean anything, um, but it is a nice kind of milestone and goal, so I just want to recognize that and thank you for watching what I create. So thanks for joining me this week. It is T-Sequel Tuesday, number 108. And the topic for this month is how do you learn new skills that aren't SQL Server? T-Sequel Tuesday, by the way, if you're unfamiliar, is a monthly blogging party where members of the community all write about the same topics. And so while today's video isn't gonna be about learning SQL, it's about learning JavaScript, it's really about the learning process that I use. And so it'll be applicable to any skill that you want to learn, whether it is JavaScript or SQL Server or maybe some other uh, skill that you want to make progress on. The skill I've been working on most recently has been learning plain old vanilla JavaScript. I've been writing JavaScript for close to 20 years now, um, but for most of that time, I've been using different libraries like jQuery to help me with my writing. If you have ever developed in JavaScript, you probably knew that for a long, long time, the differences between browsers and how they handle different things in JavaScript were just very different. So if you wanted to code a solution that was gonna work on multiple devices in different browsers and different resolutions, it'd be just a huge problem that you'd have to deal with. You'd be doing lots of conditional logic. And so a lot of people like myself included would use jQuery to kind of help not have to code for all those different scenarios. All those different scenarios were automatically handled in the jQuery library. In the past few years though, since the JavaScript standard was updated and browsers are mostly following it, there isn't really a need for using these libraries anymore. So I've been trying to push myself to just write plain old vanilla JavaScript. So when learning a new skill, uh, there's basically five steps that I take. And the first one is to become committed to learning that skill. Now that doesn't mean I spend all my time working on that skill. Um, that's very unlikely uh, to happen just due to everything else going on. But the way that I get committed um, to that new skill is to try to incorporate it into my you know, my work at my day job. That's obviously not always possible, but the reason I like kind of committing to something at work um, is that it's, it's just a lot easier, right? Because at work, if it's somewhat related to the normal work that I'm doing, um, it's a lot easier to stay focused and actually use it. In contrast, think about how when you try to learn a new skill at home, uh, focusing on that new skill will very easily become deprioritized by other things, like if your water heater breaks and floods your basement, right? There's no way you're gonna be trying to learn how to you know, write some new SQL code or JavaScript code if your basement is in a foot of water. Now, obviously you can't do that for all your different kinds of projects. So if you can't do that at work um, and you have to work on your skill only at home, you just have to be really disciplined and careful with your time management so that other priorities don't get in the way of trying to learn that skill. So the second thing that I do when I'm learning a new skill is to go completely cold turkey and just try to focus on learning that new skill. This is by far the hardest part of the whole thing because um, like in my example, since I've been using jQuery for such a long time, I'm so familiar with that library and framework that I have all of the syntax and, and functions memorized. I don't need to reference the documentation. I can just write code very quickly um, and not need to look anything up. When learning to write code without that library though, I have to look everything up and it's, it's very tempting to revert back to just using the old jQuery libraries. And so going cold turkey can actually be very challenging. The key thing that I find I need to be able to actually go cold turkey and succeed is to pick a project that I have enough time for and isn't like a, on an urgent deadline or priority right, where I can actually focus on learning the new skill instead of getting something done quickly. The third thing that I find essential to learning a new skill is to build a collection of good resources and references to learn from. And so usually that kind of resource I find either in a book or in a website that's, that's very structured in terms of, you know, basically it's acting like a book where it's going through sections and, and teaching you the, the reasons you know, not just how to write your code or do whatever skill you're trying to learn, but also why, you know, it's important to, to do it that way. So in the case of learning just 
plain old JavaScript. Uh, I think the Mozilla uh, documentation for JavaScript happens to be very good and thorough, um, and I definitely use that as a reference. It's, it's, it's kind of seen as the official reference for JavaScript itself, so it can't really go wrong there. But sometimes it can be a little bit overwhelming with all of the detail that it provides. Um, so what, I, what I'm also using to learn plain JavaScript is this vanilla JavaScript toolkit website. Um, I've linked to it below in case you're interested in learning this on your own as well. Um, but it's basically a nice abbreviated version of how to do things and it has really great resources for code snippets and polyfills and things like that so I can quickly reference the right way to do something uh, in JavaScript. All right, the fourth thing I do, and this is coming into the home stretch, is sharing what I learn. So like I just talked about with these different resources that I use, um, when I am learning, and I find myself going back to the same reference pages time and time again, I'll just copy either paragraphs or snippets of code and put them in my own document. Once I've done that with enough content um, that are on a related topic, uh, I do actually like writing a blog post about it. And so with my JavaScript endeavors, I haven't been posting anything publicly about it, but I have been um, writing my own personal blog posts and sharing them with some individuals privately who are also kind of learning at the same time I am. Um, just to be able to share that knowledge. And I think documenting and sharing what you learn is really important because if you're able to summarize and explain a concept, um, that means you really understand it. And finally, step five is just to repeat steps one through four over and over again until you have your new skill learned. Hopefully that first project you picked is scoped small enough and in a non-urgent fashion so that you can do a good job, you, you know, learn what you need to do, build out that project, document it, share it, wrap it up, and then you can do it again. But this time, certain aspects of your new project will go by, um, will go much smoother because you'll already know, you'll have your resources, your documentation that you've created um, to be able to use. And so then you'll stretch yourself and learn new concepts even more. And so that's it. That's the process that I use for learning a new skill. I basically follow those five steps over and over again for any skill uh, or technology that I have to learn. And it's, it's worked pretty well for me in the past. So thanks for watching. I hope sharing my process for how I learn new skills helps you learn a new skill as well. If you're not already subscribed, please press that subscribe button to be notified of new videos that I put out each week, and I will see you next time. Thanks.